In today's video, we're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look at some up and down temperatures. There will be multiple cold fronts over the next couple of weeks. I don't expect substantially cooler than normal temperatures to move in, but this will be enough to create some instability along those cold fronts, likely multiple pretty major thunderstorm events, bringing about some chances of severe weather. Of course, we're not in the heart of the severe weather season any longer, but that doesn't make it impossible for uh, some, you know, mid to, to high level severe weather events to happen this time of year. So we will, of course, monitor those. Uh, we're going to look at all of the storminess, of course, over the next couple of weeks. And even a tropical threat that we've been tracking for multiple days now off the southeast coast has now skyrocketed in chances of development. We've seen a huge uptick in the chances of development there. So we're going to be talking about that as well later on. Let's take a look at the past three days of temperatures, and as you can see, compared to normal at least for any given location, the northwest has seen the highest above normal temperatures here out of anywhere, so more of a positive PNA pattern in place, but we do have some neutral to maybe even below normal temperature areas set up along the west as well, so it's not acting as a truly positive PNA. For those of you that are new viewers and haven't heard me say that, all it means is warmer conditions along that western coast of North America. Positive PNA. Negative PNA would be cooler than normal conditions around there. And typically, whatever we're seeing in the west, we see in the opposite of it in the east. So, since it's neutral, it probably explains why we're seeing some cooler areas, some warmer areas in the east. Kind of a messy look overall. Speaking of the warmer areas, we've also seen this northeast corner be quite a bit warmer compared to normal. Obviously, this is nowhere near the warmth that we were seeing in the midway point of June. So we have seen things cool down a little bit, and especially here in the south where we even have below normal conditions uh, around as of the last three days. Let's take a look at the upcoming temperatures though and see what we have in store. Uh, tomorrow is the 4th of July, of course, and nowhere is really, really uh, hugely hot. We do see Maybe the, the biggest candidate for it would be this north central area like North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, the UP of Michigan there. Those areas could be in the 90s uh, with this far above average temperature pattern set up. The west is much cooler than normal here for tomorrow on Friday the 4th. Uh, again, negative PNA type pattern and likely for especially areas like Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas and some of the four corner states where things get really, really hot oftentimes. These cooler than normal conditions might make your 4th of July festivities a little bit more bearable, which is awesome. Areas in the deeper south in Ohio Valley, not so lucky as we do have some above normal temperatures set up. Probably going to be pretty hot along these areas. And then the eastern seaboard is going to be really nice, all things considered. I don't know why, but I feel like over the past 10 years, the 4th of July in particular tends to be very, very hot compared to even, you know, most summer days. So it just ends up being one of the hotter uh, days of the summer. Uh, but for the Eastern seaboard, it looks like that's not going to be the case. Very, very near normal conditions or even below normal conditions like for Florida and the Northeast here, uh, going to be really, really awesome weather tomorrow for again, any festivities for the 4th of July. Now that we move past that, we do see Saturday, the 5th of July here is warmer in the East, still cooler out West. Sunday the 6th, same thing, except we're warming up for the West, so we're starting to see maybe more of a positive PNA wanting to start up, and then we see really, really cool conditions compared to normal for the central states, and outside of the Carolinas and Virginia here, where tropical concerns are really cooling things down, actually, uh, by this point, that does happen, uh, but we're going to get to that later on, I don't want to spoil too much, but the surrounding areas in the East are much warmer than normal. Uh, for this upcoming weekend towards the beginning of next week again on the 6th Monday the 7th the entire eastern seaboard is warmer but we do have cooler air on the way uh, this positive PNA has really taken off out west so we see that fully developed by this point the 7th and we can clearly see that there will be a cold front boundary here laying across the deep south up through parts of the Appalachian mountain range and again instability in these areas between the warmth and cooler conditions will be pretty sky high so maybe some thunderstorms and severe weather are going to be a concern early next week because of that cold front moving through for tuesday on the 9th or tuesday on the 8th better yet this is where things get complicated this cold front becomes a little bit more of a stationary front where it's not moving or progressing very much and this is going to cause maybe 
uh, multiple days in a row with heavier thunderstorms and overall rainfall. This can create some flooding concerns in these areas. So we're going to be watching for that as well for early next week. Even by Wednesday, it hasn't really progressed towards the eastern seaboard. If anything, we're kind of just warming up now for these areas. And that's coming pretty simultaneously to some cooling happening along the west coast. Still very warm along the west overall, as you can see. But that western coast is starting to cool down, which is typically the beginning signs of a pattern flip. So let's see what happens by Thursday the 10th. Some cooler air still around for the west, some for the east. We end up at a point that's very similar to what we're at today, which ironically is a week from today, next Thursday. Uh, but we end up with some cooler, some warmth in the west, some cooler, some warmth in the east. That's kind of a broad statement because obviously we're dealing with more warmth in the west than we are in the east, but there is plenty to go around of both on both sides. We're cooler in the east, warmer in the west, but that does have a lot of exceptions as you can see on screen friday the 11th we are cooling in the east as that warmth is really taking over out west again saturday the 12th we're still cooler in the east again sunday the 13th very similar except we have some cooling happening along the northwest there monday on the 14th very very similar uh, and it's not until we move really towards uh Thursday there on uh, July 17th, where we end up with a flip to a neutral PNA. Very again, very similar to our current situation, but there's probably more cool than warmth here, uh, if we were to take an honest look at it. Uh, and this is why we're seeing very warm conditions taking back over for the east. This is a little bit reminiscent of what we saw in midpoint of June, which again, this video has a lot of ironic things happening, but. This is the midway point of July, just one month after that very, very intense heat wave we saw in June. So if we saw something similar exactly a month after it, it would be pretty interesting. Uh, but definitely concerning. That was very hot. I don't know if I want that much heat again. Uh, but we end up with a point where we are seeing that warm air for the west here at the end of the model run. Still in the east, but there's clearly a little bit of an Arctic movement happening here from northern canada that is moving into south central canada and even the north central states so this might cool down the central states might cool down the entire east over time or it might not just happen at all because we are at hours 360 and this is considered the very far range out so uh, definitely take it with a grain of salt moving towards the precipitation here looking towards tomorrow evening we will look at the evening this is 8 p.m probably within an hour or two of most firework events happening at let's say 9 or 10 p.m for most of them uh, we do see that there is a lot of storminess for the northwest and as well as the central states in here that's a main area of concern and also with this tropical concern we do see the southeast seeing more threats of rainfall than we originally were thinking uh, that we're going to be watching for that low to develop somewhere in here uh, likely after this point and we do see for most of the east, though, it is really nice southwest as well. Uh, so this is, again, much less dry than we were thinking a few days ago. But still, there are a lot of areas, including, again, the east, most of the eastern half, that are very dry and probably very good for 4th of July uh, firework events. By Saturday the 5th, we do start to see this pressure lowering off the southeast coast. We do also see a low there for Minnesota. That does have a bit of a frontal boundary extending both in the warm front area and the cold front area. So we're going to be watching for thunderstorm activity there in the plains and Midwest for Saturday the 5th. Moving towards Sunday there on the 6th, like I mentioned, this is the day that we're kind of watching for potential land impacts from whatever tropical development we see. Whether it's just an area of tropical you know, concern, maybe a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm. We don't really know yet, but this will be likely bringing pretty direct impacts to especially North Carolina, but also South Carolina and parts of Virginia as well. Here, we're going to be watching for that later on this weekend, again, Sunday on the 6th. This particular model does not intensify it that much. So mostly just a heavier rain event, maybe some wind, but not really a super intense system at all. But it is a tropical system, nevertheless. And again, that does bring much cooler temperatures with it. So for these areas seeing rainfall from this, don't be surprised if we're in the 70s for Sunday on the 6th, especially if we get this sort of direct impact from it. These tropical systems tend to cool things down a lot directly underneath these storms. So don't be surprised. Monday on the 7th, 
We're still seeing some activity from that tropical uh, area of interest. We also see a cold front sweeping through. This is the one we were talking about in the temperature screen. We do see parts of the Midwest, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast here getting involved uh, with potential for severe weather, but at least widespread thunderstorm chances there because of that. By Tuesday, it is becoming a little bit more stationary, a little bit weakened as well. We see these residual thunderstorms that are likely not very quick movers for Tuesday on the 8th. We do see another area of concern here as we have this kind of bowed out look, maybe another cold front trying to swing through. Again, going to bring with it chances of severe weather and overall thunderstorm activity there. By Wednesday the 9th, we see more of these just clusters of thunderstorms happening for a lot of these areas in the central and eastern states. Going to be just your typical summertime stuff, I would say. Looking towards Thursday the 10th, we see a lot of the southeast getting a little bit more involved. Friday the 11th as well. This is an important time to note that we do see just activity around for the southeast and gulf and really we can't rule out more tropical systems trying to develop when we're in a pattern such as this one with a lot of storminess in this area anything could really spin up at any point so we will be continuing to monitor any further chances a classic area for development for june and july is somewhere here in the gulf and then that either tracking up the east coast in a more inland fashion or perhaps moving over florida and being offshore or really anything in between this is just a really classic tropical cyclone track for this time of year. So that's why I'm particularly paying attention to it as it's in that classic area on screen here. Looking at the east as a whole, I mean, we really just see a lot of storminess around, but especially here for the northern plains and upper Midwest. Looking towards Saturday the 12th, it's very similar. No real differences there. Sunday the 13th, again, still just the east seeing activity day after day after day. Monday the 14th, we have now crossed beyond the 10-day mark, so beyond hours 240. And typically, this is when I tell you guys to start taking things with a grain of salt, so just keep that in mind. I don't think we see anything too crazy here, but still, details have a really large chance of looking a bit different. Uh, we still see the east very active. The northwest is also getting some rainfall here. Tuesday the 15th, same thing. Eastern seaboard is probably your number one area of concern. Wednesday the 16th, same thing. Thursday the 17th, I mean, we really don't see anything different from the end of the model run. We do get this kind of like Midwest and Ohio Valley area of thunderstorms, but again, just fairly typical stuff here. Looking at the total precipitation, really everywhere from the plains eastward is really, really active with a couple of exceptions in here where we do get these drier pockets, but most everywhere, over 90% of the regions east of the plains are seeing above average precipitation or at least near average. The two areas of most concern for excessive amounts of precipitation would be this upper Midwest area here, as well as this area where we have the tropical concerns like Florida, offshore of the Southeast, and then for South Carolina, North Carolina, and perhaps some of Eastern Virginia there as well, where we get very large amounts there as well. Looking at the anomalies, again, most areas here are above average. Uh, from the plains eastward with a couple of below average areas in here uh, like along the gulf coast and along the great lakes but really really large areas with pretty well above average precipitation happening here for a lot of these areas interesting looking at the storm prediction center outlooks we are going to go over the next three days of convective outlooks here uh, looking at the lighter green area that's our general thunderstorm risk area and as the name implies that is where we expect general thunderstorms uh, we do not expect severe weather there, but anything is possible. So heed every watch, warning, and advisory, and always pay attention. The two darker green areas are your level one marginal risk, where we expect isolated severe weather to occur. Again, this is for today. I think I forgot to mention that. Today through tonight, I would say. And then the two yellow areas are going to be your level two slight risk, where we expect scattered about severe weather reports to come in. So there is some nasty th uh, thunderstorms happening and some severe weather. But again, these are like low to mid-level threats very typical stuff and we're not seeing any large-scale threats as of now at least not in the short term uh, even for day two here tomorrow on friday the fourth again pretty large areas of general thunderstorm risk areas and a pretty large marginal risk there where i wouldn't be surprised if we even see an upgrade to the yellow area the slight risk but still uh pretty typical day three saturday on the fifth 
two light green areas and two dark green areas and that's basically it for the uh for the severe weather as we take a look at the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook we have seen a rather large increase in the chances of tropical development as i mentioned again we've upgraded from yellow to orange over the last couple of days so we're in that kind of mid-tier but now we have a risk over the next two days of development, but through the next seven days, we also have a rather large chance. So for the next 48 hours, we have a 30% chance of seeing development, which is elevated. I mean, that's where we started out with the seven day chance. So 30% chance over the next 48 hours gives us a pretty decent shot, about a third chance that we see development there over the next two days. But over the next seven days, a medium 60% chance of development. That's right. Better than the chance of the flip of a coin that we do see tropical formation over the next seven days in this area. So we have now crossed over that 50-50 mark and the chance is greater that we do see tropical development rather than we don't see. So we're going to continue to monitor this. It's been really, really interesting to track with you guys. It's also worth noting if you're reading the description there that they are sending out a Hurricane Hunter aircraft for tomorrow on Friday. So we're going to get a lot more information. Probably tomorrow is the first day where we can start to get spaghetti model guidance, intensity guidance from the models. And we're going to be able to talk about this thing a whole lot more. So I can't wait to go over that with you guys. Likely tomorrow, if not by Saturday at the latest. Super exciting stuff. With all that being said, be sure to subscribe. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it, leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.